Hey, in this quick video around AI animation, I wanted to revisit Runway ML, which has come a long way over the past few months as they've rolled out more and more updates, giving us more control and I think improving the quality of output. And I think whilst yes, it is a paid tool compared to some current free options, it's really very good, very professional and the quality of output is really getting more and more useful for commercial projects and things like that. So I'm gonna just jump in and take you through some of the new tools so you can think how you might want to use it in your own projects, whether you're doing things that look more filmic or perhaps more stylized animation. Um, cool. Um, subscribe, like, yada, yada, yada. Here we go. Okay, so jumping straight into Runway ML and I'm already logged in and I'm using Gen2. I'm gonna go ahead and press start with image. And this opens up the familiar interface which now has more controls along the bottom since I last did one of these videos. Going to go ahead and press upload a file and I've got various still images that I've generated using Midjourney. So we have a camper van, princess, an origami paper scene, this creepy character made out of wires, cartoon spider, this Tim Burton inspired character, a little gnome guy, a princess ninja, this cool fiery scene, another funny gnome, a circus scene with some elephants, a cartoon illustrative zombie and a little baby wookie in an English pub. So I've added that image to Runway ML, and then if you wanted to, we could add a text description as well to help direct the output. But for this one, I'm just gonna stick with the image and then quickly go through these tabs at the bottom. So we have the first tab where you can set a seed number or copy and paste it, turn on interpolation, upscaling, and remove watermark. If you want to, you can turn on having fixed seed number between generations for more consistency as you vary these other options. There's then the general motion tab where you can reduce or increase the motion being applied to the output. Then there's the fairly new camera motion tab where you can add horizontal and vertical motion to your camera, some camera roll and a zoom in or zoom out and again affect the speed of any of these movements and you can have two of them combined. If you do add camera motion it does remove the motion control tab but if you wanted to you can go back and press reset and just have movement being applied to your image without those camera controls. And then we have our brand new motion brush beta feature. So we click on here, tap anywhere to begin, and you can choose where you want movement added to your scene. So I'm just gonna quickly and crudely paint round a young Wookiee. You then have sliders for horizontal, vertical, and proximity movement. So if you want your character to move to the left or to the right, move up or down, and closer or further away from the camera. So if this one, I'd like the character to get slightly closer and Maybe they're gonna move slightly up and to the left and press save. And I'm gonna add some camera motion along with that motion brush. And I'm gonna have the camera zoom out. And I'm just gonna reduce the speed of that camera motion just down to 2.4 and press generate. Okay, and then around a minute later that's completed and I can press play. And it's a very cool scene with the camera zooming out. The character is slightly moving up in frame and to the left, but it feels like more like it's the camera movement than the character, but really, really cool. And I love the fact that as the camera zooms out, we see this coffee table appearing in front of our young Wookiee. And whilst he's not really animated, we have got more control over the scene. Then if you want to, you can extend the clip by four seconds by pressing that button. And you can do that a further two times, creating clips up to 16 seconds in length. Okay, and this is the extended clip at eight seconds long. We've got our initial camera movement and then the character actually becomes a bit more animated and there's a bit of mouth movement, which is pretty cool. The clarity and fidelity of the character is slightly softened, it seems at this point, but still very, very cool. What you can also do when you extend a clip, you can actually vary the camera movement. So we could keep the zoom out, but add more camera movement to the left and increase that. Actually, let's stop the zoom and add some camera roll and really whack up the speed just to see what it does. Press save and press extend. So this is that extended clip. We have our character slightly talking and then the camera starts to roll and pan off to the left. So whilst he is getting a bit blurred and warped, it's still very cool having that extra level of control. Um, so yeah, amazing progress. Now I'm just gonna quickly speed through and try out some of those other mid-journey images using the motion brush tool and a few camera controls just to share some output um, and just try things out. And I'll put on some music. Enjoy.
And that's the end of the video exploring the more recent updates around Runway ML. So if you've not tried it out before, perhaps it's time to go and take a look. And if you've used it in the past, but it wasn't quite for you, hopefully these higher levels of control they've added in make it a more useful product. And certainly the higher levels of output are a big improvement as well. Um, so quick bit of housekeeping, Press like, subscribe, leave a comments. You can come and say hello on the AI Animation Discord. You can register for free as a creative at aianimation.com and build up your profile, share work, and things like that. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, I need to get on with the day job and also work on the After Effects plugin I'm trying to build for um, having control nets within After Effects and about a thousand other side projects. All right, have an awesome day. Cheers. Thank you.